welcome to the Asylum. And now, your hosts, Rick Flieger and Rick Briggs. Boy, two days have passed and life hasn't gotten any easier at the Asylum, but by God, we are here and you're here. welcome. Welcome to the Asylum Fantasy Sports Show. Still somehow a proud member of the Full-Time Fantasy Podcast Network. Check it out at Full-Time Fantasy, fulltimefantasy.com. And if you want to find out the real inside skinny here, head on over to at Asylum Football on Twitter, asylumfootball at gmail.com. You want to be part of the mailbag, and you can always find the show and all the links at asylumfantasysports.com. Rick, week five is here. It's rolling on. We're kind of getting about crunch time. You're sitting uh, one and three or oh and four. You best get you one right now. Oh, you better believe it. And uh, yeah, one and three, you're still alive. You don't want to drop the one and four, that's for sure. And if you're oh and four, buddy, you want to be one and four because oh and five, you might as well just forget. You better be in the mailbag and prepared for one of them. And I'm sure we have a few of those in there. So, Rick, let's get right into. Your new favorite button. The ghost. The the ghost giggle. Is what you call it anyway. The ghost giggle. It's Friday night. We're feeling right. We want to get out of here early, so let's hop right into it. Rick starts and sits, and we're going to pick some games and hit the mailbag. Who is Rick Briggs starting at quarterback this week? I'll tell you what. We talked about him a couple days ago on the show, but um, I'm starting to think that uh, Kirk Cousins against the Giants (laughs) is a nice start. I thought I was going to blow you away with this one. (laughs) I have the exact same one. I'll let you give you a rationale. I tell you what. we talked about it on the show. We've talked about it, you know, before we come on the air a lot of times. The weapons that they have, and this cannot continue. This 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 offense is too good to be bumbling around like they have been. And the Giants have looked pretty good the last couple of games. They've, they're pretty competitive. I think Kirk Cousins can have a nice day. Yeah, yeah, and I, I think it comes down to when you get called out, you know, by fantasy owners – the media, a lot of that, fans, you don't care. When your teammates start to call you out, you're going to find out who Kirk Cousins is this week. It's a good matchup. It's an easy, a relatively easy matchup. All that carrying on with Adam Thielen to the point where he felt it necessary to apologize, <laughs> a pro football quarterback feeling, feeling it necessary to publicly apologize, to his receivers, we know the talent he has. Look, he's going to bungle games away, important games, we know that. But we know the talent he has to put up numbers and feed those two superstar receivers. And after being called out and with this matchup, if it doesn't get right this week, it's not going to get right. If you're the Vikings, you almost got to cut him after this year and eat that 35 mil guaranteed next year. I just think he has to step up, right? He has to. Right. That's what I'm thinking, and that's why I think he's, he's a good be start starting this week. for me in the league of consequences. <clears throat> I picked him up off waivers with the Matt Stafford uh, bye week, which shows you how much I respected the quarterback position this year. So I'm hoping for. I'll start Rick. My running back start this week. It's going to be again. We talked about him on Wednesday, struggling. Not really his fault. The offensive line is absolutely. But is that fruit fly chasing around your microphone yeah, now? Yeah, He's following me around yeah. earlier. Yeah, terrible, and you can't get a hold of the stupid things. But I think with this matchup, I like Rick Joe Mixon going up against the Cardinals this week. They've got to find something. I, I think in a PPR format. I think he catches six or seven balls, hopefully averages more than uh, .25 yards per catch as he did last week. But I'm going to think we're going to get some questions about him, and I think fairly I'm going to go ahead and play Joe Mixon this week. Okay, my start is probably equally as questionable. <laughs> and But, I mean, we're not going to recommend just the obvious ones. Right, but I, exactly. I think um, it's going to be a tough matchup, but I think with what we saw against that New England defense, Frank Gore's a guy in Buffalo right now. And um, I think you stick him in as a flex or your RB2, I think you're going to be okay. Look, with the injuries, with the underperforming teams, we got a couple bye weeks this week. Yeah. <sighs> You're struggling to find an RB2 right now. And look, Frank Gore, steady as a rock, solid. Singletary still doesn't seem to have it right. 
I agree with you, hundred percent. I'm with you. I think he's almost a must start RB two. You know, until Singletary gets back and supplants him at this point. You know, Yeldon getting in on some passing downs, but he's really underwhelmed me. You know, kind of trouble holding on to the ball, dropping passes, fumbling. Yeldon. Yeah, been two a or three years ago in Jacksonville, it's kind of like you know. I, I think we found a place for yeah. this guy. A little spark there, but he's not holding on to the football. Yeah. He's just not. When he gets in space, he still looks okay, but it. it He's not doesn't seem to be shifty like he no. was, and like you said, when you fumble it away, it's bad. Yeah, so, all right, Rick, wide receiver, who you starting this week? I tell you what, we talked about him it before. He's been awful quiet this year. I'm liking uh, Will Fuller. Oh, okay. Been wow. very quiet, and, and I think I'm going to uh, to gamble in, in a flex or wide receiver three, which is basically what the start and sit show is for. Um, we, you know you're going to be starting your Devontae Adams and, and so forth. But I think this is a sneaky start. Um, you know, Atlanta has certainly been a vulnerable defense. And, you know, they're playing at home. Atlanta's kind of questionable. It could get into a shootout with Matt Ryan, the way they've been playing. So I think that's a sneaky, cool start. I'm going to go away from wide receivers where he can go with a tight end. Now, this is a guy you're starting after what he's done for four weeks, but I'm going to use him here just to highlight how big of a game I think he has. So maybe you DFS guys, I think the price is still right on him. I still don't trust the interior of that Steelers defense right now, and I think Mark Andrews in this big spot – with what I, I think is an improving Steelers secondary and kind of uh, slow down the the outside game and in, in those wide receivers in terms of Hollywood Brown, I think Mark Andrews just goes nuts this way. I'm talking Rick, eight, nine catches over 100. If he's not in the end zone twice, I'll be surprised. I think Mark Andrews goes absolutely nuts this week. It's very possible. Mark Andrews has done has been nothing short of stellar this year, and uh, you know, really, his only drawback is is he's missing some practice with that right, sore he's foot, banged but, up. <clears throat> excuse me, but um, when it comes to game time, he's really been a good security blanket there for Jackson, and I think that continues. That's a great start. All right, quarterbacks, Rick, who you sit. Derek Carr against that Bear defense. I don't care if they're home and or not. If you have Matt Stafford or somebody like that on a buy, or maybe a Drew Brees or somebody, and you've been riding Carr, I think you best look for somebody else. Yeah, yeah. I tried to find somebody. This was tough this week with all the injuries and all the bye weeks. Looking for somebody in that twelve to fifteen range that that you're not going to be one of messing with if you're streaming. I don't have a great feeling about Jimmy Garoppolo this week. I really struggled, in my opinion. It hasn't looked crisp. It hasn't looked clean. That that Browns defense, boy, they got right in a big game on the road. Now it's tough now going all the way out to San Francisco following that. But I really think, I, I feel like they got right, and I think Jimmy G struggles on Monday night against the Browns. Very possible. Uh, running back, Rick, kind of similar to you. You just don't want to mess with the Bears. I don't want to mess with the Bills. So I think Derrick Henry's going to struggle. I think those the Bills load up. They're not going to let Derrick Henry beat them and you say, all right, Mar- Mariota, can you do her again? <laughs> you know, Can you look like a competent quarterback two times in a row? I think it could be kind of tough sledding for Derrick Henry this week. Yeah, I don't know the scenario where you can sit him, but this might be a more of a really temper your expectation situation. I agree. And I, my sit, I'm going with um, a lot of people may think that he's arrived, but um, I, I don't know. Jordan Howard, I think there's a lot of hype with the, the, those three touchdowns. They're going against the Jets coming off a bye. Look, I know their offense is kind of in a shambles right now, but that defense is still there. Um, I don't think Jordan Howard is going to be the key to Philadelphia's offense. Yeah, I couldn't tell you how thrilled I was with that performance last week. Is I've got Jordan Howard shares everywhere, absolutely everywhere. I didn't buy into Miles Sanders. I think by the numbers I've been proven right, but by playing time I haven't yet. 
But yeah, I agree. So we get that. Of course, I got them on all the on my bench on every one of those squads where I have all those shares. I think, oh, finally he's right. And then yeah, you see that matchup. I don't want to be messing with the Jets front seven coming off a of bye week. I, I agree with that one hundred percent. And how about a re- receiver, Rick? Who who's done? Who are you? finished with this <clears throat> well for this week especially until something else happens calvin ridley <laughs> same one um, you and i are in lockstep there we were so high on this guy in the preseason and it started off okay but he has regressed and muhammad sanu has taken over that right. wide receiver two um capability on that atlanta offense and <clears throat> as struggling as they are Matt Ryan needs somebody that he can count on and trust, and he, he knows where Sanu's going to be. He knows where Julio Jones is going to be. Somewhere along the line, there's there's a disconnect with Ridley. You're not making the connection, and until he starts doing something, at least on a consistent basis, he's sitting the bench. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I have the exact same one. I won't even try to come up with another one. Until I see he gets right, you, you just can't trust him. I know you drafted him as your wide receiver, too. It's a deep enough position. You There's got to be somebody better out there. All right, let's get into the picks, Rick. We got two buys this week in Miami and Detroit. The Detroit one a little bit painful. So here we go, Rick. Let's start out right here at home in western Pennsylvania. As the Steelers come into Heinz Field. Or I'm sorry, the Ravens come yeah. into Heinz Field. The Steelers always come into Heinz Field. Ravens come in laying three and a half. Well, it just so happens that... Um I was very hopeful when I saw um, the Pittsburgh offense last week, albeit they played Cincinnati. Buffalo gets trucked by Cleveland, so naturally you don't think that Baltimore is going to come in and get trucked again like that. This is still do or die for Pittsburgh. I'm going Pittsburgh 27, Baltimore 25. Whoa! whoa. I'm going to have them taking it outright and covering. I... Where I could be wrong here is if Devin Bush can perform to the level he did in the middle of that defense last week against a weak Cincinnati team, if he can transfer that into Baltimore. I just don't know. That Baltimore defense isn't very good. They really got exposed last week. They they haven't looked good. Kansas City exposed them, which wasn't a surprise. But then when a Cleveland a Cleveland team that had been struggling comes into your building and does it, so that's not your daddy's, you know, Ray Lewis, Baltimore Ravens defense. I just don't know what this Steelers defense does with Lamar Jackson, with Mark Andrews, with Ingram, with what the things they can do over the middle of the field. I don't think this one's frankly close. I I like the thought it's do or die. We're going to show some pride, but in the end, I just don't think it happens. I got the Ravens winning and covering here 34-23. to 23. I think they put up big numbers. All right, Rick, the Cardinals uh, catching three and a half heading into Cincinnati. After all of that, Cincinnati is a favorite, three and a half point favorite at home. And as much as I'd like to say, yeah, that's deserved, that Cincinnati's really not that bad, I think they are they that are bad. They are that bad, yeah. I mean, they had that one competitive game, and I even forget who they played the first game of the At year. Seattle. Seattle, they yeah. They had me believe in a little Yeah, bit. it was like, okay, well, this team's okay, but I tell you what, the injuries are caught up to them. That offense is a shambles. Arizona's not a good team by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm going to Arizona 23, Cincinnati 21, so I have them winning and covering. Yeah, I, I got the Cardinals here winning outright as well. I just think Kyler Murray's dynamic mm-hmm. enough. David Johnson can make the difference, and as bad as that Cardinals defense has been, the Arizona, or I'm sorry, the Cincinnati offensive line has been worse, and so you can certainly overcome that. I got the Cardinals here, 27-17. All right, the Bills getting three, the Bills plus three at Tennessee. Some surprising favorites here. Yeah, that, there's no question about that. Although you see all these <clears throat> three lines, that tells you it's a lot of pick 'em games. Yeah, you got that is. right, and this was a. This was one I kind of agonized over. This is a pick em. I'll tell you what, I, Marcus Mariota, as much bashing as we've done to him, he's been playing some really good football. That defense is tough. Buffalo's defense is tough. I'm going Tennessee 20, Buffalo 19. So I'm going to have Tennessee win outright, but Buffalo cover. I thought this is one where we could get a little separation. I thought, thought you would take the Bills here. I agree for this reason and this reason only. I think that team was so ready so pumped up for 
New England. New England. We also don't know what's going on with Josh Allen. That's kind of a big deal, too. Right. I'm almost at this point assuming he's not going to go. I just think you have a letdown here. I think Tennessee's playing better, the way they can control the clock and the way they can play defense. I actually think this is a field goal game, but I'm not going to be that guy to take a push. So I'm going to take Tennessee to cover here 24-20. to 20. I really feel like it is a fo- field goal game, but I'm not going to be that guy. All right, the Bears laying five on the road in Oakland. They're laying five even, huh? Well, I'm not going to be that guy because it just so happens I had it as a uh, (laughs) five-point victory. I had Chicago winning 28-23, so um, I'm not going to take – I'm not going to be the push. I'm going to go 28-22. I'm going to have Chicago win and cover. No Mitch Trubisky this week, like what Chase Daniels did last week, but now – even you know they're not that exciting, but you give the Raiders a full week to prepare for a career backup. I think Oakland can keep this game close, but I think ultimately the Bears win it. So I'm going to take the Bears to win 24-20, which would be a Bears win, but a Raiders cover. Okay, I, I, I tempted to go there, but I could see, I could easily see a, a defensive touchdown oh, on the Bears man. side. I can see the Raiders and, not scoring a touchdown. Yeah, I'm taking a chance there, trying to get them to 20. All right. All right, what do we got here? We got the Bucks getting three and a half on the road at the Saints. It's kind of funny. We're usually in the same order. <laughs> We're all over the place here with whatever schedule you uh. looked at or way <laughs> off. Okay, we have Tampa Bay. What was the line again? Tampa Bay catching three and a half in New Orleans. Wow, boy, I tell you what, that's, it just so happens I have New Orleans in New Orleans winning by five. Um, Tampa Bay, I'm starting to believe in that offense a little bit. New Orleans, look. Drew Brees is gone. They they haven't gotten beat yet. Right. So um, Teddy Bridgewater, hats off to him and that whole offense and the defense. The defense especially. is who's been impressed. Well, I'm going New Orleans 31, Tampa Bay 26, winning and covering. This one I have changed my mind on 12 times. So I'm just going to nut up and do it because it was my first instinct. Oh, the upset of the week. Jameis Winston is on a roll. I almost feel like that Saints team is just running on adrenaline after Drew Brees. Two very impressive wins. This team won in Seattle and then just completely annihilated and shut down what's been the you know kind of the story of the year for most folks is that that Dallas Cowboys yeah. offense. But let's not forget, they did it without the aid of a touchdown. I just think you know, they've gotten the two or three wins you'd say they needed to stay in contention until right. Drew Brees comes back. They got two of those three wins they're going to need. I smell letdown here. I smell a little bit of back to reality after that defense so outperformed what we thought that defense was after you know the offense has been was so good two weeks ago and was just enough last week. I think it all conspires against them. Jameis Winston and those two receivers are hot. I'm going to take the Bucks here outright with my upset special of the week, 27-24. All that right. being said, I wouldn't be surprised if – Tampa Bay lost by 20. It's the way with my upset with (laughs) Pittsburgh over Baltimore. I'm not very confident in it. All right, a struggling Vikings team and with a lot of drama in that locker room laying five and a half going into New York (laughs) taking on the Giants. Yeah, and I think that that's a... uh... That's a sizable margin for the way the Giants have been playing and the way Minnesota's been playing as well. You know, rumors flying around that Diggs is going to be traded and Thielen's scolding cousins and cousins <laughs> apologizing and everything else Dude, is Thielen's going on. Thielen's kind of been a punk about this. Look, I got no problem with them fighting on the sideline amongst teammates, but then that going out, that whine and speech he gave to the media, yeah. I, I don't think, I don't know why he seemed like he kind of got a pass on this. I'm going to say it, Adam Thielen's been a punk through all of this to this point now cousins deserves everything he gets he's been that bad but i just wanted to throw that out there that thielen has been a punk yeah and it's it's kind of surprising as well um i mean they got clocked by the bears but you know it's kind of surprising you know Diggs had over 100 yards receiving right because thielen didn't is that why he's so angry? He's starting to wonder, right? He got so used to getting his eight or ten balls every week. Is that really what this is? Yeah, is this it just, just makes a, you wonder. All of a sudden, he, is he the numbers guy? I mean, that's what kind of surprised me. Anyway. I mean, let's remember, you're Adam Thielen. It was a good underdog story. Now you're starting to feel yourself. A little. You're not Randy Moss. You're not Terrell Owens. Shut up. When yeah. he throws it to you, catch it. Otherwise, shut up. <laughs> right. Well, that's our theme all the time. Just <laughs> shut we'll up. We'll always end up there. Yeah. Right? 
Minnesota 27, Giants 21. I'm taking the Vikes to win at the, um, what is it, five and a half, so I guess they will cover. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty similarly. I think the big thing here, the Daniel Jones story is great. I think he's going to be a good one, and I am so happy about it, so all these draft nicks can shut up, too, to go along (laughs) with the theme right now. But I think this is the first real big boy defense that Daniel Jones has taken on. You don't likely, well, you're not going to have Saquon Barkley. I think he struggles here a little bit. You see some rookie moments. So I got the Vikings here 33 20. I think they win somewhat easily. Get it right on offense, and that defense reminds Daniel Jones that this is the NFL. Playing against the Redskins fails to remind you of that, I have right. a feeling. All right, Rick, we're getting into the two big lines of the week. We'll start with the Jets plus 14 at Philadelphia. Boy, doesn't that just, that just chaps me. It's tempting, isn't it? Well, I have Philadelphia 24, the Jets 10. All right, well, you need to start looking at these lines. Before I know. I, 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 well, see, that's one reason why I don't. I just try to independently think. Them. And it's kind of weird how we come up with these, some of these lines. I'm, like, having to change all the set time. set lines in Vegas, I guess. Yeah, I mean, right this is them. terrible. Um, quite frankly, it was you know, I was kind of – I had taken it in a heartbeat if Darnold was playing, but, of course, it wouldn't be 14 no, if Darnold was playing. But six he's, and a half if They're Darnold talking was about – and large spleen from that. Um, They're saying he's been cleared. He's non-contact. Not anymore, cleared. I guess. Oh, I, I saw something about grim news from uh-huh. the doctor that his spleen's enlarged. He won't be playing, blah, blah, blah. You know, I had Philadelphia by 14. I'll make it 15. I'll, I'll take Philadelphia 25, the Jets 10. Yeah, I think uh, Le'Veon Bell gets his a little bit this week. I think that Eagles defense can be had to a degree, to at least to a degree that we didn't expect. But that said, defensively they're good. The only way they cover is if the defense plays as well as they did two weeks ago before the bye in terms of scoring points, you know, more than anything. But in the end, I'm just going to have to pick an Eagles blowout here. So I'm going to lay the 14-31-13. All right, and then every week it seems like the Patriots are laying double digits. They're going to uh, give 15 in Washington to the Redskins. And you know what? I'm taking the Pats. 34-17, 34-17, I am taking it, the win and cover. I, the skins look pathetic. Yeah. I mean, I, I really think that the week six matchup uh, between the skins and Miami certainly could, uh, I think they're in week six, it could certainly uh, describe the two worst teams. Yeah, no question about it. I, that 15 is nowhere near enough. That should be right up there with what that Miami number was. Wasn't that, was it 20, 18? Yeah. I can't remember yeah. what it was. I think this is just a bludgeoning. I think Tom Brady uh, kind of feels reined in the way he had to play against Buffalo last week, and I think the uh, the Washington secondary pays for it. I got this, and I mean it. I honestly think this is going to be it. Sometimes I do stick with these. I got the Pats 51, the Redskins 13. I think they put up a 50-burger down in Washington. Very possible. All right, Rick, the Jaguars getting three in Carolina with the Panthers. The, the two most interesting quarterback stories going head-to-head this week. You know, I was really downtrodden. I told you I wrote the uh, preseason review for Jacksonville for, uh, what was it, pro football guru, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And um, Foles goes out, and I'm like, oh, boy, you know, so much for all this high hopes. Tell you what, I'm on board with Minshew Mania, man. I was watching that. Yeah, we talked about this off air, that comeback against Denver. We got a little over a minute to go. They just lost the lead. No problem. We just go on in there, walk them down the field. We'll kick a field goal. I love both these teams' defenses, you know, Jacksonville and Carolina. I like what both of these teams are doing this year. I'm going Jacksonville 17, Carolina 16. So I'm going to have them uh, obviously cover because they're getting the three. Yeah, you got them winning out, right? All right. This is why I'm a terrible gambler. And why, if I were not married and didn't have an adult in my life, I'd be walking around wearing a barrel and living under a bridge. Three Ever since Minshew took over, I've been picking against the Jaguars. So what, I lose, what do you do? You double your bet the next week. I lose that, double that bet. I'm going to get my money back eventually, <laughs> and that is the only reason I'm going to give you the Panthers here winning and covering 26-20. to 20. Minshew's going to give me my money back, by God. <laughs> 
whether he he wants to or yeah, not. It's going to happen. All it's right. got to happen. So I'm going to go with that. All right, Rick. Boy, this line would have been I'd have thought was crazy, and I'd have been all over this three weeks ago. Not so much anymore. The Falcons getting five and a half in Houston after that pathetic performance they had. They did, and I tell you what. I mean, I got Houston winning this game outright, twenty four twenty two. I'm going to I I. Just, I'm just not as impressed with Houston's offense either. No. That they can, that they can, um, lay a smackdown on Atlanta like this. I think Matt Ryan still can cover enough yards and so forth and throw up enough points to keep it close. So I'm going Houston 24, Atlanta 22. So Houston to win, Atlanta to cover. As bad as those two offenses have been, for some reason, this game's got shootout written yeah. all over it to me. You know, DeAndre Hopkins and Deshaun Watson coming off terrible games. All the issues with Ridley and everybody so quiet in Atlanta. This is just has shootout written all over it. So if I'm going to predict a shootout, I think a shootout still favors Atlanta. I'm going to take the Falcons here outright 33-30. to 30. If it's low scoring, you're right and Houston wins that game. For some reason, I just get a shootout vibe from this one. What's going to happen one of these weeks? And that's got to yeah. favor the Falcons if we get one of those. So I'm going to go with that with the Falcons outright. All right, the Broncos getting six and a half in, in uh, I almost said San Diego, in L.A. taking on the Chargers. There's something about this Charger team. Phil Rivers just keeps cranking out the yards and the touchdowns. Give me Phil Rivers any day over Joe Flacco. Even though yeah. Joe Flacco has been playing good football, it's not good enough. And... The Chargers are just going to get better. They got Gordon back. Whether or not it's even limited or not, that's just somebody that Denver's going to have to pay attention to. Give me the Chargers, 31, Denver 24. Yeah, Chargers win, they cover. I got them 29-19. The only news in this one is when I jotted this one down in my show prep, Rick, let me tell you how I spelled Chargers. C-H-O-R-G-H-E-R-S. Why? I don't have any idea. I'm just reading this thing. I like where you spelled Judge Wapner on our little uh, computer board. I still had that. He right. smells like a Whopper from Burger I King. I could use a Whopper. I haven't had dinner yet. I'm starving. Yeah, we have any either. Whoppers? No. Damn. But yeah, what I say, yeah, Chargers by 10, so they win and cover. All right, the Packers, Rick, getting three and a half points in Dallas. And this is my upset special of the week. I think they go down to Big D. I'm taking Aaron Rodgers 30. Dallas 28. I kicked that one around a little bit. Here's what it come down to me. With what Jordan Howard just did to the Green Bay Packers, yeah. and after Ezekiel Elliott getting completely shut down last week, I feel like everything's going to kind of right itself a little bit here. I think Zeke ends up being the difference. I got the Cowboys here, 31-28, which would be a Cowboys win, but would be a Packers cover based on this three-and-a-half point number we have right now. I could see that one moving, but for right now, we're going to lock in at three-and-a-half, and I'll have the Packers cover. Interesting one on Sunday night, Rick, is the Colts getting ten-and-a-half at the Chiefs. That is surprising. Boy, they're begging you to take the Colts. They are. There, and, which makes me nervous. They're and you know what? You. Yeah, I know. I mean, but even before I knew what the line was, I was actually thinking seven or eight myself. Um, I got Kansas City. They're in Arrowhead. They are Kansas City. 31, Indianapolis 23. So I'm winning by eight. So I'm going to have Kansas City winning, but I'm going to take Indianapolis to cover. We don't give Jacoby Brissett near enough run on this show or even nationally with what he's doing with that team in the sort of the quick and stunning nature of Andrew Luck retiring. Jacoby Brissett has been an absolute stud. I believe he's tied for the league lead in touchdown passes, if I'm not mistaken. He's running this offense. They're doing well. That being said, Vegas always knows better. That ten and a half point line is te- begging you, begging you to take the Colts. If Vegas wants me to take the Colts that bad, I'm going to take the Chiefs. Intellectually, I feel like this game, like you, should be closer. I'm on. I'm going to play a little game, uh, play Vegas's game here a little bit. So I'm going to take the Chiefs to win and cover thirty four twenty three, just because Vegas is. 
tr- desperately yeah. trying to get me on the Colts. Side. Jacoby Brissett tied with Pat Mahomes with ten touchdowns yeah. and Lamar Jackson. Yeah, no, you are absolutely correct. Ten. Yep. And we don't talk about that enough. What no, a yeah. tough spot he was put in, and he has more than stepped up to the challenge. Right. And, and the biggest difference is is Brissett has ten touchdown passes, but he has six hundred less passing well, yards. Yeah, yeah but, not air yards, passing well, yards. Uh, air yards and <laughs> on grass. <laughs> On one o'clock game, on Dasher, the, on Dancer, on three Brooke, minutes yeah. into the first quarter. All right, look at San Francisco. <laughs> oh Cleveland. yeah, Monday night Browns plus three and a half at San Francisco. You know, this this should be an interesting game. But I, I, San Francisco coming off a bye. I know Cleveland's feeling themselves a little bit. That's a tough. That's a tough job heading out to the West Coast. Yeah, you know, East Eastern uh, team heading west to a team that's on a bye. I'm going San Francisco 23, Cleveland 21. So I'm having San Francisco to win, but Cleveland to cover. I have struggled with this one probably more than any. I know I've said that on a couple. It's an interesting slate this week. But this one, everything you said, San Francisco coming off the bye, having not lost a game, you know, Cleveland off the big win and now having to turn around and go all the way out wet. I just, for whatever reason, and I may come December look like a fool for this, I'm not buying the whole San Francisco thing yet. I'm just not. I just don't feel it. I don't feel good about it. I'm going to take the Browns out right here. So you're to buying in the Cleveland, but no, not San Francisco. No, it's just. But I do. They're think two similar teams. I know a I lot know. of hype and. To, you know, uninspiring. But they're but, both what two and two, yeah. I think something like that. I don't. Know. I just believe less in than in San Francisco. Although I do think they could just Cleveland could just take a thud on a Monday night you know, with all the hype. But I'm going to take the Browns out right here, twenty to sixteen. But I would not be stunned or upset if I was wrong. Quite frankly, all right, all right here we go. Got me. All right, asylumfootball at gmail.com, at Asylum Football on Twitter to get your questions answered. Rick, let's have it. And as you can say, I mean, you you can tell that, uh, you know, on the tweeter and, and the email and everything, I've been busy. You've been a busy man. Okay. And, you know, I'm getting really tired. I mean, these shoulders are starting to slump here. You know, I don't have as many questions as normal because I didn't have time to get everything. But anyway, we've got quite a few. Stu writes. Stu, there's a man's name. Okay, I had Breeze and Stafford's on a bye. So so who do you recommend, Flacco or Carr? Oh, good Lord. That is a not fun I'll tell you what, Carr's my sit against that Bears defense. i got to go Flacco. Against the Chargers. There should be something. There are so many injuries on that Chargers defense. He's, boy, there's got to be better. He had better over off. 300 yards, I think it was, against Jacksonville last week, Flacco, if I'm not mistaken. And, I mean, I th- he should be able to do something against the Chargers. I, I just do not like Derek Carr against that Bears defense right now. You know, Minshew... Rudolph, I think I would take over both of those guys this week. I don't think that's the question. All right. Between those two, it's Flacco. If Rudolph's out there, I'd go, I'd go there. I can't imagine Minshew's still out there, but he's out there. There's got to be better options than those two. But between those two, it's Flacco. All righty. Let's see. Jamal writes, we have a trade in PPR. Blow it up. I'm getting Frank Gore and Keenan Allen. Okay. I'm giving Le'Veon Bell and Allen Robinson. Way too much. Way too much. I, I like getting Keenan Allen. Frank Gore's fine. No, I'm not doing it. I PPR, right? Yes. Yeah, Le'Veon Bell, he's going to struggle running the ball, right. but he's going to catch eight or nine balls a game. No, way too much. Don't do it, Jamal. I, I Don't agree. do it, Jamal. I, I agree. No. I agree. When, boy? When? <laughs> oh, so you're just telling Are me. you going to get your act together? Get your act together, Jamal. Don't give away the farm. That's right. All right. I know, you can tell he wants Allen bad. That's oh, just yeah. Too, and I don't blame you. That's just too much to give up. Or somebody wants Bell bad but didn't want to give up anything yeah. other than Allen. Right. You know. Okay, let's see. Cindy writes... Need a flex in half point PPR. You know, can we back up a minute on this? All right. 
for Jamal. I think where the difference is is Robinson for Gore. Well, yeah. If you need a receiver, if you could do Bell and for Allen straight up, I would do that in a heartbeat. True. True. It, Robinson's too much of a sweetener for me to to get Keenan Allen. Or if you could do Bell and something less than Allen Robinson, that's yeah, I, my problem. Now, I don't know who's initiating the deal, but if the guy was sending the deal to Jamal, you know, my advice to you is Jamal counter with Bell for Allen straight up. You know, just let Gore yeah. Robinson go about yeah, their business. I just think Robinson's because Robinson's just the sweetener to this deal, right? right? That's too much. If you make that deal straight up or something lower, obviously don't know what Jamal has on his roster, but something lower. I don't mind the Bell for Allen thing is a nice deal. I yeah, think. it's the Robinson I'm stuck on. Sorry about that. No, go that's ahead. all right. I, that's good. Okay, like I said, Cindy writes flex in a half point PPR, Gore or Chark. It's Shark, right? He's the man in that offense. He's Minshew's guy. I like Gore this week. You know, as you mentioned, was was he in the starts and sits? I don't remember yeah. where we talked about Gore this week. I like him, but in any type of PPR, even half point, Shark's the guy. He's he's the man. So yeah. that, that one's easy for me. Yeah, I think Shark is is a start. He had kind of a dud game last week against Denver, but um, I tell you what, I, I think he, like you said, he's the guy. So Shark, it is. Okay, Robbie writes, pick two. Doesn't say if it's PPR or anything, but, um, you know. (laughs) That's right. Robbie Anderson, Will Fuller, Muhammad Sanu, Elshon Jeffrey. All right, so presumably (laughs) that... (laughs) You just push anytime you get. I didn't do anything. I don't know what you're talking about. All right. Jeffrey said it and forget it. You're right. Robbie Anderson's out. So this is. Yeah, I mean, you don't even have Darnold. Anderson's just an afterthought. I'd dump him for anybody. Yeah. So this is Fuller, Sanu playing against each other, interestingly. This isn't so easy for me. It's not easy for me because I had Will Fuller as a start, but the more we talk about. Gee, this could be a shootout. You know, Muhammad Sanu's been getting a lot of work with with Atlanta. <sighs> I'm going to go Fuller here. I have I him, too. I have I him have ranked to. higher. Yeah, I could be persuaded for Sanu, but I got Fuller ranked higher. So this is Jeffrey and Fuller. I mean, Sanu's not that far behind. No, and, and since I have him in my starts, I have to go with Fuller. Okay, you're going to like this guy. Oh, Lord. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Torque. Right? <laughs> Torque? Really? Yeah. Torque? There's no way that's his Christian name, right? So this guy's <laughs> so this guy's calling himself Torque. Yeah, the only Torque I've ever known is Peter Torque from the Monkees. So, that I was mean, his last name. Now, if this is his actual name, I guess I feel bad. But if you're calling yourself Torque, I think this is you overinflating your sexual proclivities, and I'm not buying it, Torque. All right, go ahead. PPR. All right. <laughs> Gallman or Montgomery? I was dead wrong and stunned by what Gall- Gallman did last week. And I also noticed I got to issue an apology. I meant to do that at the top of Wednesday's show. I listened back. I do air check myself, and I called him Gollum. Oh, I know. Two straight episodes, I know, and, and I you let never you. called me on it. <laughs> So I wanted, I don't know why, where that gets in my head, but I'm so stupid when something gets in my head, it's damn near impossible to get it out. Yeah. Anyhow, Gallman stunned me. He really did. I didn't, didn't we even have him as a sit or at least had that discussion? I think you, you've got to play him. It's clear Daniel Jones is going to keep relying on him, at least in the passing game. Montgomery's done nothing. Absolutely no. nothing. And that's so. the thing. I, I mean, that would be my point. You know, look. Minnesota defense ain't the skins. No, okay? no, no. But Chicago going to Oakland. Oakland can is pretty stout against the run. And David Montgomery's done nothing. 
Well, and that's so I mean, what, you have to go Goldman, at right? At this point, the fact that Montgomery's even still hanging around is the stubbornness of many, many big national brand fantasy analysts who said he was going to be the guy. And intellectually, it made sense, all the reasons they've given. But we've played four games now. He hasn't been much part of the game plan. When he has been, he hasn't performed well. Montgomery is hes sitting yeah. until we see this brilliance that's going to come out of him, which may well come. But, but it's it better not start there. hurrying. But we know Gallman's going to touch the ball a lot. Yep. But we don't know that about Montgomery. Exactly. Exactly. I agree. Okay, uh, finally, we have Griffin. Blow it up. All right, Griffin. Griff. Can I call him Griff? Yeah, I think I think he would do that. All right. Okay, um, it's a PPR league, but that's all the particulars that I have. That's fine. But he gets, I get Diggs and Mac, and I give Tevin Coleman and Jarvis Landry. Oh. Absolutely. What, yeah. What's the question? I, I I I I can see where after the game that Landry had last week and the rumors with Diggs and the troubles that Cousins has been having, I I can see where this is coming. But let's face it. Look, Diggs is a hundred and two catch guy, which is basically the same as what a Landry is. He was right. like about well, ninety six last year, something like that. And Mac over Coleman. Mac over Coleman because Mac's a bell cow. Coleman's still coming off of an injury, and we don't know how much he's going to be platooned with Mozart and Brita and so forth. Yeah, man, I tell you, hit that accept button yeah, now. Yeah, this is forget about it. No question at all. all right. Right, is that it? Well, I do have uh, do have one little thing here. This was scientifically analyzed through a button, and they actually had how they came up with it. On the site, you could click it, and it was like a million pages long, all these algorithms and everything. They put in all kinds of sports records, you know, hundreds okay. and hundreds of them. Who's they? Well, these, these, egg these experts, egg, eggheads at this place. And, eggheads at this place. <laughs> this is a really I prob- good story. I probably should have given them credit. No, we, but now I we bet- have a show title, <laughs> Eggheads at This Place. Let me <laughs> jot that down. Thank but these you. are the ten best all-time records oh, okay. that all this algor- all algorithms and everything came up I'll with. I'll be the judge of that. Go ahead. Okay, number ten. We'll go from ten to one. Norm Van Brocklin, Los Angeles Rams, single game passing yards in 1951 of 554 yards. Yeah, in the 50s, I'll give that one of them. All right. Okay, number nine. I have to find number nine here. Okay, I don't think we can argue with this one. Wayne Gretzky's career sis of 1963. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, I'm all right with that one. Okay, 749 career complete games by Cy Young. (laughs) As an organization, MLB won't have that over the next 50 years. Right. Okay, Uh, Wilt's 100-point game. You think somebody's going to beat it? Oh, is that the question? Well, yeah, yeah, somebody will beat it. You think they will? I think it's still in question, and if that was even professional basketball teams he was playing against. Then. Oh, yeah, I think you really have to go back and look at uh, lineups now. I saw a nice comparison on that. You know, I'll have to but supply that to you. Wasn't there some doubt that it even actually happened? Well, no. I thought there was. Uh-uh. I'm still getting Anyway. It. Okay, number six. Career win record of 511, Cy Young. I hate to give them two, but again, yeah, nobody's well. allowed to pitch more than two and a half innings. Right. So. Okay. Oh, Jim Bottomley, 1924, single game RBIs of 12. Doesn't impress me. That's a long standing record. Well, that is. It. It you really know what is. I mean? Yeah. That's. that's that's what, uh, gee, 95 years now. That's a pretty good that, run. That's pretty yeah. good. Okay, DiMaggio's 56-game hitting streak. I'm going to give that two. Uh, yeah. Two. We always like to pretend when somebody gets in the 30s they're going to get there and nobody ever gets close. Yeah. I think you have to give this one two, too, because like you said about nobody pitching. Career no-hitters of seven, Nolan Ryan. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Can't and get no- no-hitters when you only play pitch two and a half innings. <laughs> exactly. And number one, 
688 career intentional walks. Barry Bonds. They do have a pretty nice caveat to it comparing it to, um, and I have to find it, of course. But anyway, um, you know, the, those giant teams, you know, he didn't, he wasn't like the some of the other giant teams that had like Willie Mays and Willie McCovery on either side. No. You know. <laughs> you know. I think what's but, impressive about it, though, is there were several times that happened with the bases loaded. <laughs> you know, well, it's just we're not going to mess with him. Yeah, we just don't want to. Oh, and here's I forgot number five. I'm oh. I'm sorry. I, I went through number, ugh. and this is one that's quite impressive. We talk about Wilts wasn't really impressive to you. How about um, Oscar Robertson's forty ones in a season triple doubles? Yeah, that's that's pretty <laughs> nice stuff. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, let's All right. get out of here. Everyone, have a great weekend. Thanks for listening. Check out everything over at AsylumFantasySports dot com at Asylum Football on Twitter. Rick will still answer those questions right up till game time. And of course, check out Full Time Fantasy, FullTimeFantasy dot com at Fulltime Fantasy. Good luck this week. We'll be back next week to recap it all. Until then, we'll see you. Take care. <laughs>